Virginia may be for lovers, but its roads generate true passion as well, especially if you're wheeling the ultimate in motoring performance, Ferrari. And if you've planned wisely after a glorious drive and visiting the charming towns along the way, your destination is Virginia International Raceway. For that is why VIR was created, to emulate the roads of Southern Virginia and allow them to be driven fast. And it's not just a marvelous racetrack that harkens back to another era, but it's a true motorsports resort. And today, this weekend, for the first time since 2007, it hosts the Ferrari Challenge North America for the opening round of the 2021 Championship Chase. Hi, everybody, and welcome indeed as we are getting ready for the second race of this weekend for the Copa Shell categories, two of them. In Copa Shell and Copa Shell Am, they are out on their formation laps right now and uh, getting ready for this second race. Great to have you with us. Uh, Shea Adam will be joining me down on pit road as these cars completing those formation laps, making their way in and getting ready to queue up on the grid for the start of this second round of the championship. Had a fascinating race yesterday uh, that started dry, then had huge rain come in at one point they had to stop the race everybody ducked into the pits changed from slicks to uh, rain tires and then went out for two laps of green flag racing and it was pretty impressive stuff so we expect a good one here and one of the reasons is these venues virginia vir it's spectacular but look at the rest of the schedule sonoma end of april watkins Glen, mid-may montreal in support of formula one mid-june mid-july indianapolis with ferrari racing days Formula One Ferraris back at Indy. That's going to be awesome. Road America, mid-September, and then the Finale Mondiale uh, at Mugello in Italy. So just an, another top-tier schedule of venues and looking forward to uh, that unfolding as well. And uh, if you're not really quite sure where Virginia is, well, here's where. It's on the eastern seaboard, and you can see just about central to it, uh, technically in the southeast of the United States. And uh, it is uh, an absolutely glorious area, so green and verdant, but uh, that means a lot of rain, and that's what we've been experiencing as of late. Here is a look at the layout, three and a quarter miles long, 17 turns. That first section is very technical. Then when you come out of that first set of S's, that blast up through the marvelous climbing S's, up through Oak Tree and down into the roller coaster, that is just high speed with a huge important launch out of Oak Tree. And then you drop back down uh, as you go through the roller coaster that uh, turns 14 down through 17 and back onto the uh, pit straight. And that last turn, double apex left, that is really tricky. And if you go off in the wet, uh, it's not good. Everybody being very careful about that. And as we take a look at the weather here, uh, the big concern and issue is, and the reason we've sort of revamped the schedule here, is rain and the potential for that rain. But as you take a look at the air temp of 19 degrees, uh, that, of course, is Celsius. Uh, that is a relatively relatively chilly it's very humid though and that's a big part of it but the temp has come up a little bit we're now in the upper 60s and that is going to help there's a look at eileen bildman's car and uh shay will tell you a little bit about that graphic on the side and what it means it's a it's a pretty cool story but uh just some of these graphics on these cars and you, you know what we've talked about it before these 488 challenge evos Boy, what an amazing canvas for <laughs> being able to put some graphics on. They are beautiful cars, high performance and exciting. And there's a grid full of them wrapped around you, Shay. I'm so happy right now, Greg. You know what it's like to be in this environment. We've got one minute until the engines are going to fire up. So before it gets loud, I want to tell you a little bit about Eileen Bildman's car because 179, it's got the Griffin on the side. Eileen lost her son, and she said the Griffin are protectors. She feels like her son is a protector of her when she's in the race car. But this fierce women fight for life is to raise awareness for cancer. Eileen is trying to do as much as she can to bring attention to a very real issue that plagues way too many households all around the world. Eileen racing car number 179. Her coach is Catherine Legg. Catherine knows how to go well at this track. Eileen yesterday parked up early because of the rain. Now it's the exact opposite conditions. We have no rain. We have a drying circuit. Everyone is still on rain tires because the pavement is very slippery. So it doesn't matter that it's drying out. It's not dry yet. And as you see on her hood, 2020 Ladies Cup champion Eileen Bildman fighting with Lisa Clark today for that honor to try and win the class. We've also got, though, 
two cars up from her. If we just walk up a little bit, the blue and orange car, this one is Lisa Clark. This is Lisa getting ready for the race start, trying to get ready. But between the two of them is car number 131, that's Luis Perusquia. Lisa, up here, Children's Burn Foundation giving new help. We have all sorts of charities represented on all these Ferraris here today. Next to her, the silver car of Paul Keebler in 133. He was impressive in the race yesterday. And in front of him, Roy Carroll, who is a local, looking for a good result today, trying to make his first ever podium finish. Thanks very much, Shay. And as the field sets out on the pace lap, just a quick thing as we get to the grid. Uh, Early in the qualifying session, there was a red flag in the Copa Shell qualifying. And so these grids are being established on the second fast lap from qualifying since we abandoned qualifying today to get the racing in. Well, very few drivers in Copa Shell actually got second fast laps because of that red flag. So they've grouped them by class. Copa Shell up front, Copa Shell M in the back. So Todd Coleman gets the pole. Dave Musial Jr., who was pole sitter yesterday. Charles Whittle, who's a rocket ship yesterday over Michael Watt, who's been fast since the drop of this weekend. Jan Bernier had a huge race yesterday, as did Christopher Aiken. Eric Marsden there has been very fast, struggled a bit in the race. Real Choxie had a little bit of an off. And then Osvaldo Gallo got a story on him as well. Frank Rumi, who was pole sitter yesterday, will be pole sitter again. Lance Cauley and Brandon Cruz, who had a brilliant race as a rookie in yesterday's race. These are all Copa Shell Am cars. Then Schmidt and Roy Carroll, who Shea was just talking to. Then Lisa Clark, fastest of the Ladies' Cup drivers. And Paul Keebler in the Continental Autosports. Ferrari, Luis Baruskia, Ferrari of Tampa Bay. Anthony DiCarlo, Ferrari of Palm Beach, another of the gentleman drivers. Eileen Bill as she talked about, Ferrari of Long Island, and Brent Jacobson, Ferrari of Austin, and then Neil Langberg, Ferrari of South Bay. And that completes your starting grid. As I said again, uh, normally they'd be intermixed, but because so few drivers in Coca Shell had second fast laps due to the red flag, they just grouped them by class. So keep an eye on Ruby and Carly and Cruz and Schmidt and Carroll. These guys, uh, they were showing some really speedy times and they might well be working their way up through and putting on some excitement for us here. Look at that, seeing some drying little spots on the track here. And these drivers are really going to have to be managing these Pirelli P0s uh, because if it continues to dry like that, Tony Vlander has talked about it uh, previously this weekend, you've got to hunt for moisture to try and cool those rains down or they'll overheat and then they become incredibly slippery. And so everybody's going to have to be really, really careful here and it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. I wanted to mention about Osvaldo Gallo, that Miller Motorcars entry. He had a big shunt in uh, qualifying yesterday and uh, got uh, a moment to chat with uh, Andrew Weiss, who, uh, along with Neil Gahani, are, are in principles of the Concourse Club, that marvelous racing development being built down by the Miami airport. And they said Osvaldo was a founding member of the Concourse Club, and so Neil, racing here this weekend, offered Osvaldo his own backup car and said, hey, you're part of, the, of our group. As far as we're concerned, you need this car. You've got it. So uh, that is how Osvaldo is continuing to race and some true camaraderie, as you always see in the Ferrari Challenge paddock. So we are getting ready to go here. Second of the doubleheader races for the Copa Shell categories here. And the opening round of not just Ferrari Challenge North America, but the opening round globally of Ferrari Challenge. So it's all kicking off here this incredible venue, Virginia International Raceway, this weekend. And we are about to get the green flag for the second race. Again, 30 minutes, timed event, and uh, the two different categories. So two races going on within a race, if you will, here. As the field coming down, the F.A. Tributo, the glorious machine that is the official safety vehicle of Ferrari Challenge, ducks into the pits. And here we go. Todd Coleman bringing him up to the line, and he had a remarkable run yesterday with a win from second place. Dave Musial, who was on pole, finished second, and oh, I don't know whether Todd went earlier. Dave was caught napping, but Todd is gone, and Charles Whittle going right with Todd here, and Musial has dropped back into third at this point. That's not what he wanted to see happen. Watt's still there in fourth, and that was an aggressive move looking down to the inside. It may have been Jan Bernier, who was uh, awfully impressive as that race unfolded yesterday. Started near the back and worked his way up uh, with a tremendous finish. So Jan yeah, started in 19th and worked his way into the top 10 overall. Just a great drive. As we're watching this battle early, the number 133. Putting it all on the line here. That's Paul Keebler, but feeling a little bit of pressure here as they work through this very technical. This track 
three distinct tracks almost taped together, if you will. The first section through one through turn five, very technical. Then it's high speed bravado uh, intermixed with that key moment in the, the oak tree turn. Then another long blast, and then it's into another technical section here, and it keeps drivers certainly on their toes here. There's Whittle working his way through, chased hard by Musial. Right behind Musial, you can barely see that, is Michael Watt. Then behind him is Bernier. Watt looking down to the inside of Musial. He's got his car in the right spot. Gets to the apex. Musial can't turn in. Musial, as a result, a little late to the throttle. And up to the inside comes Jan Bernier. And it's now a drag race here in the battle for fourth. In the early going, look at them side by side. Coleman is gone. Here is Whittle, who was just remarkable in the wet yesterday. There's Watt, and it looks as though, indeed, Bernier able to ease by Musial. And Musial's got a late move deep up the inside from the 119 to Chris Aiken, and Chris makes that stick. So it's been a tough opening lap for Dave Musial here as he's dropped from second spot to fifth. As Whittle rolls that beautiful chrome blue. After that red flag yesterday, and look at this, Bernier once again is just hooked up. Watt getting not a great launch and run through that final double right-hander, turn 17, 17A, they call it hog pen. And he is under attack. Aiken getting aggressive and works down the inside. So Watt too struggling in the early going here. Musial gets caught to the outside, and that may be surreal Choksi. Some debate whether Surreal was going to be able to run, certainly in his prime car. There he is. And uh, looks like they got that prime car fixed. No T at the end of his number, which tells you it's in a backup car. So Surreal having a good start here in the early going. And Musial just struggling a bit here in the early going. From second to seventh here in this opening lap. Now, it may be that Musial started with a different, different tire pressures on that car. It's taking us now. He suddenly said, no, I've got some speed here. Just drove right back around Surreal. And that's something you, you have to think about here, especially in wet conditions, wet, damp conditions on rains. If you start with high tire pressures, your car is fast early. Those high pressures bring the suspension up where you want those pressures to be to really be in the setup window. But if you start high, then they get higher. And if the car tires overheat, your pressures go through the roof, and then the car is slower through the second half of the race. If you start with a lower set of pressures, you might not be as quick early, but then when everything equalizes, you find yourself with a car relative to some others that's suddenly getting faster and faster. And maybe that's the game that Musial played here. It cost him in the early going, but now he's got opportunity to make good on it here. Going back just a little bit in the order, here's the number 199. That is Brandon Cruz, who uh, in his first race yesterday got the win. Ended up with a third, second fast lap is where he started. He's already gone to the front of the Copa Shell Am class, getting around Lance Colley and Frank Remy. Frank Remy, who qualified essentially on pole with his second fast lap of the 109 has dropped way back. I'm not even sure he was able to take the start. That's a real shame. He did have a, a bit of a moment out there yesterday, but he's got some sort of an issue, and unfortunately, it looks like Gallo may not have been able to take the start in this race. And that is a shame as well. So a couple of uh, key players, and especially Remy, who was just so quick, not able to take the green in this one as we go back up to this battle with uh, Surreal Choksi in the 173. And the number 130 of Musial. There they come, chasing Watt, right in front of Watt, the black 119 of Chris Aiken. If you look at the livery on Watt's car, you see an awful lot of orange and purple. If those colors seem familiar, then you look again, you see a tiger on it, you bet. He is a rabid Clemson Tiger. There's Whittle, then Aiken. Watt now starting to get some pace. Closing back up in the back of Aiken here. Then Choksi, then Musial. So Ch Musial went back around Choksi. Then Choksi got him on that lap as well. And the 126 of Eric Marsden at the back of this queue just watching. And Eric was very quick in the practice sessions. 
up and up into the top four overall, but got caught out in the qualifying session with that red flag and uh, was mired in the back of the field. He didn't get that second lap. So he finds himself once again in chase mode and take a look at the drying parts of this track, Shay. Well, if you want somebody to keep an eye on, watch number 127, Lisa Clark. I mentioned her on the Gridwalk Ferrari at Beverly Hills. Last year, her best finish was sixth in class. Right now, she's sitting P4, and she was two seconds faster than anybody else on track in her class that last lap around. Lisa is on a charge. She has her eyes set on third, and from there, second and first are not too far ahead either. Absolutely not. She's got fast lap in that class right now, so that's very impressive here as we jump back up to this lead battle. But yeah, she's had a great start, worked her way up. As has Jay Schreibman. We talked about, I, you mentioned him, Shay, at the back of the pack. He's worked his way up smartly and is now up into fifth in that category. Look at this, side by side. Choxie gets underneath on Michael Watt now. Musial trying the outside around Watt here. That's a tough place to do it you get up here. Now, is he going to try the over-under? Watt saw that he was going to do that and shallowed up his exit a little bit. Musial read that and went, yeah, that would be too much of a risk. Just tuck in. But we've got a little queue that's building up here between Chris Aiken here and that black 119 from Ferrari of Houston. There you see it. It's a real Choxy right behind him now, Ferrari of Denver. Right behind him, Michael Watt, Ferrari of Atlanta. Then Musial. Ferrari Lake Forest and Marston right behind them I believe in the Ferrari Westlake entry and you can see lots of drying bits on this track here and these rain tires are not going to like that those tread blocks are really soft you still have to get heat in a in a tire for grip and those tread blocks yes they channel water out from underneath the tire to avoid uh, hydroplaning or aquaplaning but they're also very soft, so they flex and build heat. But when they're on a lot of dry pavement here, they can overheat badly, even chunk a little bit. And then the tires become a real handful. They become very, very slippery. So these drivers here are gonna have to be, you know, and then you've got those pressure changes as well. Who started on low pressure, so it's gonna be a little quicker later in the race versus anybody who ran with a high pressure earlier. When it's this dry, those tires are going to massively heat, and the pressure is just going to spike, and that can massively upset the handling of the car, and then you deal with the, the lack of grip from those tires, and everybody looking forward to these wet spots here on the track, trying to find them, drive through them to cool those tires a little bit. Coleman up front, as I said, is gone. Fast lap at 2 minutes, 4.7. That's over two seconds quicker than anybody else. Well, second and a half quicker, I should say, than Jan Bernier, but he's nine seconds back, then another 10 back as Whittle. But then we've got this amazing battle. Look at this, side by side once again. Musial working the outside of Watt through the exit of one into two. Now clears him in three. Gets through, and now up into turn four. Marsden taking a quick look the back of Musial and realizing, no, nah, that's not the moment to be doing that here. Meanwhile, here's the 133 of Keebler. See, he's just gone around Luis Peruskia, that uh, beautiful red number 131. And that puts Keebler up into the eighth spot. Peruskia, one of the real veterans of Ferrari Challenge competition. Just loves it, keeps coming back to it to run GT Mexico, but uh, has started in Club Challenge and in 2016 in Copa Shell. He's been around for a little bit. Just a great character. Oh, Aiken pushed a little wide at the exit of Oak Tree. And you can see Choxie tried to turn down underneath him, but he just asked a little bit too much in the front of the car. And you can see it cost him a little exit speed. And now Musial was thinking, I've got to run on him here. Can I do anything with it? and wasn't able to do that. I think I think Musial had to check up at the last second, just for an instant, when Choxie started to push wide there, and it blunted his run. Then Watt not able to do anything with it either. What a great drone shot here, following these guys down through the roller coaster, and through Hogpen, and uh, when this track ended up closing in the early 70s, for about 25 years, it became farmland, and just 
outside of where that corner is there. It was literally a hog pen on a farm for many years, so that's where it got its name. Is the 132 of Jan Bernier. Bernier sitting second overall. And second in class right now. And he was a revelation in the race yesterday, as I pointed out, where he had uh, qualified a little bit farther back, but worked his way up from 19th overall and that qualifying uh, he worked his way into a top five in class and showed speed and he did it again here in these opening laps and uh, Charles Whittle Charles was once we went green after the stoppage in the rain he was a missile he came up and made up a ton of spots here for a really strong finish on the podium in class and I wonder if uh, they didn't have the car set up for a little bit wetter conditions because he was really quick here in the early going, as was Bernier. Well, the Whittle is able to hang on comfortably right now to that third spot. And a sizable margin back to Aiken. And here they come. But look at this. Aiken is closing, and that's what I was wondering. And I think Whittle, they may have had that car set up for a lot wetter conditions, a little bit higher pressures and a little bit softer. And uh, that means that as this track dries now, Need the car a little bit stiffer to really be able to use that dry sections, particularly in the high load, high speed, change of direction stuff like the climbing S's. Whittle might find his car a little bit off. I mean, he had, as I said, a big margin back to Aiken, and that has shrunk now down to about six seconds. And Aiken feeling the motivation from behind in the form of Buziel. It was really pushing him hard right now. And you see them as they flash through. Then it's Choksi, then Watt, and then Marston as they come through here. Musio looking to that outside line. You can get your nose up along the outside here. He wasn't able to do that. And then he floats out. Choxie thought, well, maybe I can duck underneath. That didn't happen. But here's the other part of the story. That margin from Whittle in third back to Aiken in this queue in fourth has gone in one lap now from six to four seconds. So they are closing on Aiken in a hurry. Or uh, Aiken is closing, I should say, on Whittle in a big hurry. And the margin between Bernier and Whittle also is dropping. You can see Bernier up front and then Whittle. So Bernier with that opening sequence where he was flying as well, they may have gone with a much more full wet setup than some of these others here and maybe paying the price right now. And Brandon Cruz now is set fast lap in the AM category. They have 206.9 as he leads still from Colley and Carroll. And here is Lisa Clark sitting in fourth. Oh, in a moment, a big wiggle there. She was really pushing. Nice save, gathered it up. But a couple of cars have been able to sneak through on her at that point. That was looked like that first climbing S. You come up that right-hander, and the apex is right at the top. And it looked like she really asked for a little bit more from the car, and it just gave a wiggle. And she has a great save. But that has cost her a couple of spots here. I'll tell you, this race has flown by. We're already almost at the halfway point here. Here's Aiken. Musial just glued to him down through the roller coaster. Choxy running a little tighter line. You can see it hurts him at the exit here. You run that tight line through that double apex left-hander, a uh, right-hander at the bottom of, of the hill cost you on the exit a little bit. Musial getting a nice run, and again, Aiken defending to the inside, Musial going to the outside. The problem is right now, there's that drying line, and if you get off that line, it's gonna be slick, and the guy that's on the dry line will just have more grip naturally, of course, and Aiken is putting his car right on the edge of that dry line, and if Musial wants to try an outside move, oh, but Aiken scoots a little wide, Musial up along the outside, not able to stay there. Choxy thinks about coming up the inside. So Musial is definitely hunting here. 
And so far, Aiken has been really good with his defense, putting his car, making sure he's on that dry line and making sure that if Musial's going to go by, he's got to get at least one set of tires on the damp stuff. You can see how dry it is there in those climbing S's, which makes you want to ask more of, of the car here as we take a look at the one. 26, I think that's Marston, and he may be starting to feel pressure from 199 crews. Now, this is two different categories here. Yep, that's Eric. Trofeo Pirelli Am 1. There's Brandon Cruz. This is his first weekend in Ferrari Challenge North America, and uh, he has been a revelation, winning his first ever race yesterday in crazy conditions, and now today in damp to dry just flying out there right now. He's got about three seconds back to second in class Lance Colley and is closing on Marston. Roy Carroll still sits third. Obviously, we're going to have to learn a lot more about Brandon Cruz here because he seems to be the real deal. Very solid job. Now, look at this. Oh, it, and it's not Musial that's in the front of this queue. It is Whittle. So that means that Aiken, Musial, Choxie, et al. have caught Whittle. And this now is for the final spot on the podium, and we've got five cars duking it out now for that final podium spot in Copa Shell. Whittle has his mirrors full, and this is when things can get interesting because clearly Aiken's got a little bit more speed than Whittle. You take a look at those margins over the last few laps and how they've closed it up here, but now that Aiken has caught Whittle, if he doesn't get by him in a hurry, you find prime opportunity. Oh, but somebody pulling off up in front. Not sure who that was. Oh, you can see Whittle a little wide there. He's missing apexes there in the S's, and I don't know if that's... He's looking in his mirrors, or if the car just isn't sticking. And they're coming up in the back of Eileen Bildman. And she gives them a nice wide berth. Let's them know I'm going to stay wide here, do what you need to do. This is the faster category coming through. Eileen doing a beautiful job, very good track awareness. Letting them all come through. The one spot for Whittle where that soft setup, if indeed this is speculative, of course, but if that's what he's running, is going to pay off nicely is exiting Oak Tree where you want to get a lot of plant on the back of the car to get to the throttle early. And if that soft setup here, that car will be very compliant and he goes to throttle, it'll squat at the back and really, really launch him. Okay? Well, just to give you a little idea of what the conditions are like, because you're seeing people slipping and sliding all around the track. If you look down, it appears to be dry, right? So it's getting better. But then if you walk out onto the stuff that's what's on the racetrack right now, it's very, very slippery. And considering that these wet tires have now been on the cars for almost 20 minutes worth of hard racing, they're going to be getting slippery too. As this race goes on, it's going to get more and more difficult for the drivers out there. So just because you see them running where they are now doesn't mean they're going to wind up on the podium. Oh, absolutely right. And we're seeing that play out here. And as we're watching this great battle for third, I think this group is closing a little bit at Bernier. Yeah, they're, they're bringing him into it. So it's going to become a battle for two spots on the podium, still well up the road is Coleman. He's just controlled it beautifully. He just set his fast lap of the race, and he's down into the 203s, and oh, side by side, Musial trying to figure out a way by Choxie. And you can see Musial just turning in a little sooner. He's, he's trying to get Choxie out of his rhythm. And a place you could do something here is if you could float more speed through turn 10, and if you do that, you gotta use way more road than Musial did. You can surprise somebody up the inside here at 11. But you've got to be very brave to do that because you've got to be willing to run all the way out to the edge of the track and the exit of 10, and that is spooky. That's spooky in the dry, let alone in damp, and as Shea said, on these well-used rain tires in dry conditions or damp conditions that are so slick. 
I think Musial does have a little bit more speed. But he's also being very, very cautious here. And that's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I get it. And Whittle has responded here. When these guys ran him down. Whittle has been able to up the game. And I wonder if Whittle was saying, look, I don't know that I've got much for, for Jan up front. And conserved a little bit. And he's now got a little bit better tire maybe on the car. Hasn't pushed it quite as hard as Aiken in this group as they've been auguring their way forward. And he's got to hang on for just over seven minutes here. Excuse me, just over eight minutes. There's Bernier. And here comes Whittle. Oh, Choxy. Oh, really, really brave. I thought that was going to end in tears. I thought he was going to be down so far to the inside, the car was going to skate when he hit that curb in the wet and just bounce off Aiken. And somehow, Surreal was able to get that car woed down and not get into Chris. And Chris, to his credit, uh, he didn't just say, whoa, and open the door way wide. He kept him slightly pinched here so that Choxie didn't get a free run through the corner. That was brave on both drivers' parts with great car control because by keeping that little tighter line, Chris was certainly running the risk of Joxy bounding over that curtain and, get, and getting into him. So nicely done by both drivers. Very close quarters racing, but avoided contact. And it didn't, they didn't, and didn't lose very much time, so it didn't really allow any kind of a breather here for Whittle of sorts. Marsden still able to hang on in front of Brandon Cruz. I think for Brandon, he's a rookie here, but you know that team from Ferrari of Central Florida are talking to him going, keep in mind that car in front of you is a different class. You are leading your class. You won yesterday. Do not throw away a potential class win for meaningless, essentially, overall honors. It's bragging rights, but nothing more. The big picture of this championship here. And Lance Colley now just set fast lap in the AM class, so he took that point away from Cruz. Right now, that team, I'm sure, those driver coaches are very intently talking to Brandon, going, you've got a big lead over Lance right now. Stay with it here. And right now, we're getting reports that Todd Coleman is driving way offline and he's already and he's done it again he's gone to a 2031 but in so doing he is also looking for anything that appears to be damp just to try and cool those tires and now Whittle looks like he's eased away just a little bit from Aiken and as I said Aiken and Choxy and those guys may have used up a little bit more tire trying to run Whittle down Here's a look at your leader. You know, when you get these big leads like this, sometimes it's not so good because you don't get any uh, any TV time because you're out so far. And you can see he's being very, very careful, driving smart lines. You see structure on the side of the car. That's his structured data centers. That's his business. He builds data centers. Talked to him last year. He built a big one and had just sold it and was in the process of uh, creating a second one. And Coleman now starting to get into traffic, but he's got a big, big lead right now. And he can really take his time working his way through that traffic. And he's doing exactly that. And the traffic in front of him, they're running way off pace here. And so a nice job there, just leaving the door open, letting Todd cut through. Nice graphics on that car, that green to black. With the white highlighting as he slips through. I think that is uh, Luis Paruskia. Todd got into one hot there, that's for sure. Here we go, back to this little scrum. Bernier, that margin is dropping. And again, Surreal with that tighter line can get momentarily to the inside of Aiken. But that tight line, he just, it, a little bit more side scrub and friction that causes speed. 
He loses ground to Aiken and then lets Musial get a little bit of a run. Now let's see if Dave now is willing to go deep into one here and use that outside. He was thinking about it, but couldn't quite make it work. And Aiken again just puts that car in just the right spot. So Surreal has, has no real estate to do anything with here. You can see that margin is non-existent. And Whittle has a little bit of breathing room, but for Whittle now, his main concern is going to be a shot at second place points as he has now closed to a second and a half off of Bernier. You can see how close it is there. There's a look at the 121, the B storage and wine cellars. For 121, third place car of Roy Carroll, the foreign car's Italian machine. As Shea said, he's a local boy. This is home for him. From Greensboro, North Carolina, this is his home track. He does a lot of racing here. Real estate developer with some really interesting projects like this self-storage and wine cellar combinations. That's pretty cool. Inventive, different. Look at that car with the Beehive graphic on it. He gets it, and here is your leader in Copa Shell Am, Brandon Cruz, looking to go two for two in his first ever weekend of racing. And in Ferrari Challenge, no less. That is stunningly impressive. And uh, keeping Eric Marston in his sights, but not trying to take any risks passing him for what would just be an overall position change. Here's that battle once again. Bernier and Whittle, then that small gap, then Aiken, Choxy, Musial, and Watt. We're into our final two and a half minutes. Ooh, Choxy that time got a nice run. He was able to be a little closer, but Aiken has just enough in hand. It's going to be interesting to see. Choxy now decides to float out wide. He's going to carry a lot of speed in around the outside. If he gets it woed down, he might be able to make it work. Oh, and he just got his left rear on that damp patch. And that's what Shea was talking about. You get off of that dry, those damp patches are very greasy. And those well-used rain tires in a drying condition here, the grip just went away. And that was enough. And Musial said thank you and dove underneath. And Whittle now attacking on Musial here. Got a couple of laps to go. Then Aiken. And then Musial working through the snake and now setting off for that high speed blast through the uphill or climbing S's. Apex right over the rise. Set up for that quick jaunt to the left. Then that right hander again. Don't use all the track on the exit there because you've got to be fast through 10. Get set up. And Whittle had a moment there, and through goes Aiken and Musial. Choxie's going to try the outside up into 11. And look at Watt comes up the inside. May have been a little touch there on Choxie. They're side by side. Choxie refusing to give way. Side by each on the exit of Oak Tree. It's a drag race down Madison Avenue. And for Surreal Choxie, this could be a tough lap, dropping from fifth potentially to seventh, depending upon where he and Watt settle things here, but for Whittle, even worse, going from third, potentially, to six, and Watt gets through, closes the door on Choxy. So what an eventful lap that was here for a couple of drivers. There's Bernier, he's got a little bit of room here now, but it's Aiken, then Musial, there's Whittle after having dropped back, then it'll be Watt, then Choxy. As the white flag comes out, Musial got a nice run and gets his car down to the inside. He thought of Aiken. Aiken just gets a little bit more leg there, but Musial now knows it could be done. Look at Watt again trying to force, and again, a little bit of contact as he comes up the inside of Whittle, and they come through. Last year, we saw Watt late in races just do some brilliant surprise passes, popping up the inside of people. Both of the passes he's made here, there's been a little bit of contact, but he's been alongside. So I'm not sure that that's going to get much ire here. It's been aggressive, but he had that inside line really clearly. It's going to be interesting to see how that's viewed here. 
No question it's aggressive, but it's all down to was it considered clean by the officials? It's their call. So Bernier second, Aiken third in that black 119. Then Musial. And the Joker livery car, Musial really clouded that curb and Watt running a little wide, doing the big lurid slide. Got away with it. Didn't get off and hit anything, but he's going to lose a ton of space here. And with, he, when he locked up like that, may have stalled the car. But he was asking for everything that thing could a, a, offer and more going through the S's. And it caught him out. Meanwhile, here we go. Todd Coleman, two for two, this time from pole. Ferrari of Denver, a brilliant weekend for Todd Coleman as he steps up. Wow, how impressive a run was that for Todd. He doubles it up in the opening round of the championship. Here's the rest of the battling going on. Here comes Bernier. He's got some lap traffic in front of him here. He doesn't want to get bottled up. Gives that car a little bit of room. And then floats the speed as the rest of the field coming down and through. Bernier coming to the line. Here's the drag race. This is for the final podium spot in Aiken. Will hang on and think over Musial. He does. Musial fourth, Whittle shuffle back to fifth in the late going and Choxie dropping as well. And coming through six with Marsden will be seventh. And of course, Watt with that off will take the final spot eighth in class. But will be well done in the overall order. And Brandon Cruz gets win number two in a row over the 176 of Lance Colley for Ferrari of Atlanta. <laughs> Watt recovering for 11th overall. Then the number four, Jay Schreibman. What a run for him up from the back of the field due to the unique qualifying scenario here. He comes up and puts himself into a very impressive fourth. And Lisa Clark rounds out the top five, even with her little off. Gathered it back up at one point in fast lap of the race. Wins the Ladies' Cup. Great run by Lisa. And there is a look at Coleman. The overall win for the second consecutive day. Really impressed. And he's got to be absolutely glorious. I talked to him on Friday. And uh, I looked at some of the timing sheets. And uh, he said, yeah, things are going well. He said, I just have to just... I have to drive within myself, not get carried away. Keep that self-discipline and just drive the limit. Don't get over it. He's done it brilliantly for two days in a row. He's got to be mighty, mighty pleased with how that run happened today. Let's look here at Neil Langberg. That race for RP. side of the car very very special charity for Neil hits very close to home and his family and he's uh, really part of it relapsing polychondritis having a solid run today in sketchy conditions meanwhile Todd Coleman coming in and he'll be heading over into the Park for May victory circle staging area yeah Double thumbs up. He's done that twice here this weekend. With Bernier and Aiken completing the Copa Shell podium. Copa Shell Lamb, Cruz, Colley, and Carroll. Cruz, by the way, spelled with a K, not C as the others are. What an addition to this championship. He is. Enjoying this cool down lap here at this very special facility. Keep in mind. When we're done with this, we are going to be right back with the second of the Trofeo Pirelli races. So you're going to want to stay with us here. And my guess is for Trofeo Pirelli, they might be heading out on slicks. Look at that. There's even, it looks like, I don't want to jinx anything, but that looks like there may be a shadow or two starting to appear down in the paddock area. Here's a very special moment. For any race car driver, Todd does it for the second straight weekend, or second straight day of the weekend. Can't wait to see this grin. 
See the rest of the paddock there in the background as the field comes in. Ferrari Challenge personnel greeting all of these drivers. Team members as well. Look at that. Look at that. There is. There's some shadows out there. We're getting a little bit of uh, brightening skies. That was the very reason that we're running this unique Sunday morning schedule is uh, everybody fully anticipating the same kind of weather we had yesterday afternoon, this afternoon. So the huge schedule change up and not doing qualifying for day two, just using second fast laps from day one qualifying so that these drivers can get out and race in the best possible conditions. And they put on a great show already. Wise call by Ferrari Challenge North America fiefdom. <laughs> you can hear the chat there with Brandon as he climbs out. Look at that. That's impressive. Ferrari of Central Florida. That's the dealership that Brandon races for. The way that it's all set up is these dealerships, and they are racing for a dealer cup. And uh, that's important to them in terms of the points and the like, but each of the dealerships has a relationship with the team that fields the cars for the dealer's and therefore these drivers, you look in the background there, that's the stuff that will eventually move our way. So that's why we're hustling along this morning. And with that, let's hustle down to Victory Circle. And a very, very happy Todd Coleman getting victory hugs from everybody around here. Todd, they came up to you and they said it was just a walk in the park, but it wasn't from your perspective. How difficult was that win to earn? Uh, I can't even put it into words. It, it was... Uh, the track was great. The grip started coming in halfway through. I actually started testing curbs <laughs> through the S's at some point. Uh, and, you know, I, like, I don't know what happened. Um, you know, we, we went the opening lap. I looked behind me, and we'd already gotten a gap. And then at that point, you know, I was just trying to follow lines. So uh, it, was a long, it was a long race. It was a long race because you never knew dry spots and then really it was tire management. Like I was looking for every single puddle I possibly can, so there was no rhyme or reason to where I was going. Well, congratulations on a perfect weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, he has strung together a beauty here. Qualified second for yesterday's race, won it. Qualified on pole and wins today with fast lap. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Here's a look at the provisional results. Coleman, Bernier, and Aiken, the overall in Copa Shell podium. And what a battle we had that whole race. Aiken, Musial, Whittle, Choxie, and eventually uh, catching up to Bernier even and put on a good one. And Eric Marsden there, seventh in Copa Shell. And then you see Brandon Cruz winning in Copa Shell Am, eighth overall with Collie and Carroll. Then David Schmidt, Lisa Clark completing the top five. Anthony DiCarlo. And there you see Michael Watt ultimately 14th overall, but getting some points at least in that uh, Copa Shell category. And then Keebler, Peruski, Langber, Bildman, Jacobson, and Gaio. And as we said, Gaio and Rumi not, uh, Rimi not able to take the start. Let's get back down to Shea. Well, yesterday was a learning experience for Brandon Cruz, going from dry to wet. Today was wet to dry. Uh, which do you prefer? Uh, dry all the time uh, <laughs> is much better. Were you still having fun out there today, though? Oh, not it's an a ton easy of fun. race. Uh, really amazing race. Again, great sportsmanship. You know, the challenge is so much fun. Uh, as the tires really heat up, it gets a lot trickier, you know, so not everyone's running the same pace. Everyone's trying different lines, trying to find grip, uh, which just makes it really exciting. Congratulations, and thanks for making it exciting for us. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> well, he did indeed do that, didn't he? Uh, that was some just absolutely remarkable driving, and when he was able to catch up to the back of uh, Morriston, uh, that kept things interesting as well. Let's take a look at points in our two Copa Shell categories. And now with two rounds in the books, obviously they set off for the next round uh, in Sonoma, and here's how it looks. Brandon Cruz leading with two wins. That's 30 points. Lance Cauley with 23 in second. Roy Carroll, 18 in third. Remy, um, that's, a, that's a shame because he would have been a player in this one with 15. David Schmidt rounds out the top five, and then you can see Lisa Clark right there 
and the rest of the players. And uh, the one thing for uh, Brandon, he got both wins, but he never got a fast lap or a pole. And uh, that's four points. And so that's all part of the program here that you keep your eyes on. And again, obviously, with this unique format today and going with second fast laps uh, from qualifying, um, you know, some of the drivers, they get that fast lap and then they cool it down a little bit and then something happens and you don't get out for another lap. Now, here's a look at Copachel. Coleman, there you see those bonus two points are going to be big over Musial by 10. Bernier third with 18. Whittle fourth with 16. Aiken uh, with 14, uh, 14 Watt, Choxy, and Marsden. But think about this for Whittle. He was running in, in third and ended up back in fifth. Well, that's a swing, uh, four to five points. That's how important this can be. That would have put him up into third in the points. So uh, it's always have your eye on those points if you're planning on running this championship. So an eventful race started damp, ended up dry. Todd Coleman from pole got a great launch. This Musial seemed to be caught just a little napping. Whittle jumping into second. Musial slots into third. Watt shuts the door on Jan Bernier and then Chris Aiken. But Jan Bernier, that just, I think, lit the fuse because there he came back around and picked up one spot, and he was just going to march his way to the front. And there came Aiken slicing down underneath Dave Musial in the black number 119, and that moved him up into fifth. And then this battling ensued, and Cyril Choxie tried to force his way down the inside of the 119 of Aiken, and Surreal not able to make it work that time. And then this time Aiken comes by as Whittle had a little bit of a moment, let both Aiken and Musial through. And Whittle right there trying to come back up, but look at Watt in that orange and purple machine forced his way inside of Choxy and picks the spot up. They had a drag race all the way down this long back straight. And uh, Watt was able to close the door right there and make that pass stick, but Watt had some more adventures uh, in wait for him right there, ran a little wide, exiting the uphill S, has dropped that left tire, did a quick spin, didn't hit anything, was able to gather it up and finish. But up front, Todd Coleman getting a big win, a comfortable margin, his second of the weekend, and doing everything he could possibly think of here in terms of accruing points. It was a fabulous race, and the next round of the championship, and uh, the end of April in Sonoma. Thanks so much for joining us here. I'm Greg Creamer. Thanks again to Shay for all of her great work down in pit lane. And remember, stay tuned. We are coming right back with the second of the races for Trofeo Pirelli. Don't go anywhere.